Visit the YouTube channel and subscribe for more oncology videos. Normal esophagus is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, which is pale pink in color. This changes to gastric columnar mucosa characterized by presence of oxyntic cells at squamocolumnar junction. At what point should we say that gastric mucosa have started? There are various definitions of squamocolumnar junction. Most follow the starting of gastric mucosal folds as there are no significant folds in esophageal mucosa. But switching squamous to columnar epithelium is not exactly a line. Columnar epithelium of stomach is resistant to acid and bile, while squamous epithelium of esophagus is sensitive to it. So it makes sense that there is a buffer zone, a transitional zone in between two mucosa. This transitional zone extends is 1 to 2 cm proximal to squamocolumnar junction in esophagus. So distal 1 to 2 cm of esophagus can be lined by columnar epithelium normally. If this columnar epithelium extends beyond this proximally, it is called columnar metaplasia. Columnar metaplasia, when happens, can lead to three types of columnar epithelium based on type of cells. If there is mucous cells, it is pure cardiac epithelium. If there is oxyntic cells, it is oxyntocardiac epithelium and, if there are goblet cells then it is intestinal metaplasia. So the Barrett's esophagus is defined as transition of stratified squamous epithelium to intestinal columnar metaplasia characterized by present of goblet cells. Therefore the diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus requires a combination of endoscopic and histologic findings, in that the columnar metaplasia must involve the tubular esophagus on endoscopy and must contain goblet cells, which define the presence of intestinal metaplasia on biopsy specimens. The dogma that the distal 2 cm of the esophagus could be lined by cardiac epithelium led to the dictum that at least 3 cm of columnar lined esophagus had to be present to establish the diagnosis of Barrett's. Chronic esophageal inflammation and ulceration resulting from the reflux of gastric contents, including both acid and bile, drive metaplasia within the esophageal lining. Chronic GERD is the main cause of Barrett's, with the risk and length of Barrett disease correlating with the amount and duration of reflux exposure in the distal esophagus. There is a strong reproducible association between obesity and the risk for EEC, indicating that patients with a body mass index 30 bear a 2 to 3 times higher risk of developing this malignancy. Most, but not all, population-based studies have found an approximately two-fold increase in risk of Barrett's in smokers. Similarly alcohol may also have a role. The decline of Helicobacter pylori infection prevalence in developed countries is associated with an increased incidence in GERD complications such as Barrett's. One explanation for this has been that H. pylori infections reduce intragastric acidity through the generation of ammonia or by causing severe corpus gastritis with concomitant destruction of gastric parietal cells, thus reducing acid production and protecting against GERD complications. Aspirin and statins may have a protective role in preventing Barrett's and cancer. Overall risk of Barrett's esophagus progressing to adenocarcinoma is around 0.5% per year. Barrett's esophagus once diagnosed is classified as non-dysplastic Barrett's, low-grade dysplasia and high-grade dysplasia. Non-dysplastic Barrett esophagus is kept on surveillance with systematic four-quadrant biopsies every two centimeters with separate endoscopic mucosal resection of mucosal abnormalities at an interval of one to two years. In case of low-grade dysplasia, aggressive reflux control with PPI and anti-reflux surgery, if needed, repeat endoscopy with surveillance biopsies in 6 months. If there is regression of dysplasia on two consecutive exams, L then surveillance will continue as for to non-dysplastic Barrett. If dysplasia is persistent then ablative therapy is recommended to reduce progression risk. Low-grade dysplasia patients may directly choose ablation rather than surveillance. For high-grade dysplasia, classical treatment is esophagectomy, but now endoscopic mucosal resection is commonly done. Consider esophagectomy in patients with ultra-long, HCM or more Barrett, when multifocal disease present, or in patients with severe GERD especially in the setting of poor esophageal motility and large hiatal hernia. Important point to note is that presence of Barrett's itself is not an indication of surgery. It is presence of dysplasia and risk of malignancy which makes surgery necessary. Visit the YouTube channel and subscribe for more oncology videos. Hey.